is National Meditation Month, and it's time to get in touch with your mind, body, soul, and your finances. That's right. According to the American Psychological Association, 65% of Americans say that money is a significant stress factor yep. in their lives. I, I believe tracks. it. I, I believe it. So, Shamina Taylor is an attorney turned wealth expert and mentor. Okay, girl, mm -hmm. boss, go off. She's on a mission to help individuals level up as the most powerful, fulfilled, and successful version of themselves. Shamina Taylor joins us with three steps to creating a personal money manifestation. Good morning, Shamina. Good morning, thanks for having me. Thank you we're, for being here. We're very excited we're about all, ears. all the facets of this. And we wanted to start with first, how can meditation and manifestation help us deal with our financial stress? Well, the first step that I, I love talking about is that just being aware of where you are. So for me, I have created a practice with meditation that has helped me call in a lot of money into my life. Hmm. My first step is that I would say lean into the lack. You know, that for me is something that I feel like um, if you understand where your money mindset is, mm. then you have to be able, you have to be, you, you will be able to be the solution. I always say, if we know where we're through the problem, we know that we're the solution. So okay. that for me is the first thing that I would say is lean into the lack when you're creating a money uh, money mindset meditation. Find out where all of your um, beliefs are when it comes to money. Okay. And then move them aside and don't bring them into your practice because you don't want to keep, you know, ruminating over what you don't have. Yeah. Some people are like, I don't have enough money. Money's going away. Money's hard to come by. Right. So start thinking about things that you want to implement in the first, in the first, uh, in the first, time that you're going. Yeah, right, so first get step. rid of those limiting beliefs. See what, the, see what the beliefs are, acknowledge them and then put them on a shelf. Yeah. Kick those limiting beliefs to the curb. I love that. Uh, your next tip, you say, don't separate fact from fiction. So tell us more about yeah. that. So the universe doesn't know the difference between what's real and what's not. Ooh. So meditation is a great time to reprogram your subconscious to believe something else. So what you would do is I would just, you know, allow yourself to set three intentions of what you want to do during that meditation. How much money do you want to bring in? Set the intention as you're going in. And, you know, if you're, you're, you're calling in, you know, a thousand dollars or a million dollars, the universe doesn't know as long as you're aligned with what you're calling in at that moment. Okay. Huh. Yeah, okay. I have a new bedtime routine in the works Less, for tonight. Exactly. <laughs> I'm telling you. This is, um, I, I like this one because I often say this about many facets of my life, which is you can't force an outcome. And you say don't force the vision. What does that mean and how do we not force the vision? Because it's so easy to be like, ah, I need this. I need it now. Uh -huh. Well, here's the thing. When I first started meditating, which is crazy now that I teach it, but the, when I first started meditating, I literally looked down on my phone. I'm like, it was like 53 seconds had passed. I'm like, what? <laughs> I like I've been meditating for like ever. Seven now hours. I meditate an hour. <laughs> but, but during those 53 seconds, a lot went on. I heard the washing machine. Ah. I heard the dishwasher. Mm. Couldn't still myself. And they say that meditation should be easy because you're just sitting there, but it is it's not. not. It's, it's very so hard. hard. Very hard. It is to get that still is because you got to turn off all this, you know, what's going on up there. So one of my things that I love to do is put some practicality in it. Because once you bring your senses into things, right. you bring, you know, your your, your 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 smell and your touch, you get yourself grounded. So for the third thing, bring some money in. Bring some money into your meditation. Oh, Maybe oh, put hold up. We got that. Here, money money say let, me, that. let me reach into my little lunch money wallet right here. Okay. She's got, she's got her lunch money uh, wallet. You got some coins. I got $2. $2. One for you, one for okay, me. Okay, big spender. I, you know, I'm flush with cash. All right. So if we meditate right, and manifest... Uh, now, just close your eyes if you're like meditating, right? And just, mm -hmm. I mean, you can imagine that that could be $100. It doesn't, who knows the difference but you, right? So if you start, you know, feeling into what does it feel like to carry $100, it changes the game for you. Okay. So if you are in the, in the, in the belief and the energy that this is $100, guess yep. what? More of that's going to come to you. Okay. Oh my gosh. Uh, I already feel it. I feel it. I feel rich. Uh, we heard also, this is very interesting. We heard that a wallet well, in a bright color, especially gold or green, will help attract more abundance. Is well, this... green is connected to love and it's connected to the root mm -hmm. chakra. And remember, I'm attorney, so if some of this stuff sounds a little crazy. <laughs> it, just, it sounds. I have made multiple million dollars with making sure that you're able to get into this mindset. So red is for prosperity and fame, let's say, right? But it also could be like passionate where things could mm. move money out. So I have like, I, I, this is a Louis Vuitton, but remember I've been That's doing right. this work a long time. That's right. This is a brown, brown wallet and brown is grounding and saving. And so 
if you keep a brown wallet, you actually will be saving more money into your um, into your life. I actually have a little hack that I'll tell you right now to do, which is really easy. Instead of you know the wallet color, because we're wanting we're wanting to reprogram the subconscious all the time, right? Yeah. So what I would do is start carrying twenty bucks inside your wallet, and maybe maybe do a hundred. Hundred's easier because a hundred's really hard to break. Like how many right. of you when you go to school, you don't want to break that hundred, right? right? Nobody so wants. If you can, if you, and after being a single mom and trying to start all over again, I had to figure out that more was coming. So I put $100 inside of my wallet and I wouldn't spend it. And every time I looked at it, I would feel rich. And then I would just feel like I always had money. So if you always have the energy of having money, money likes to be attracted to more money. That's right. So I started adding more and more and more. And then I just start carrying more in my wallet. So now I feel wealthy all the time. As long as you feel wealthy, wealthy money will come to you. You'll be attracted. But if you feel like you don't have money and you're broke and you're struggling, you're going to attract more of that. So we have to start working around and getting you to attract more money into your life. Focus on the abundance, not the lack. Can I borrow $20 or $100 to put in my wallet? I'll give it to you. Okay. I'll give it to you. I'll send Shem you one. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I got to get me a Louis wallet. With a Louis wallet. Shamina, thank you so much.